around, welcome back to our channel. How are you doing? How are you doing, baby? How am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> are you I'm doing, 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 I'm doing. doing. You're doing. I'm doing. You're doing. Yeah. What are you doing exactly? I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, right, cool. Filming this video. I oh. guess. Good. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> so today we're gonna be answering some questions. Mm -hmm. We're just giving our own um, opinions. Okay. I wanted to say a disclaimer, like every relationship is different, so don't take our advice like facts for your relationship. Maybe you will find something relatable for you in what we say. But every relationship is unique yeah. to those two people and what works for you might not work for us. So we are not relationship experts. We're no, just we're speaking not. off of our experience with each other and our past relationships and like yeah. what we've learned in life, I guess. Yeah. Uh, exactly. So yeah, like hopefully you find some helpful points. Let's dive right in. So obviously as you've seen from today's title, we are going to be Giving a relationship advice. Yeah. Okay, and I have some questions here that I wrote down, and we're just gonna answer them Sounds to the best of our abilities. Sounds good. Like, yeah. See, hit me. Okay. The first question: What are some signs that you should break up? Okay. What are, what some, are signs some signs that you should break up? In my opinion, mm -hmm. if on some level you do not trust your partner. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's a good sign. Yeah. I'm going yeah. off my own experience, obviously. <laughs> and you guys know about this already. Okay, yes. And yeah, if you don't trust your partner, if they're, if they're not giving you their full trust, obviously that comes with time, but after a while, if you still feel that sort of like not anxiety around them, but more like insecurity on some level, perhaps that's a reason why you should break up. Okay, I agree with that for sure. Trust is built. Yeah. You know, everyone, everyone's trust uh, needs to be earned. I think. Yeah. And it's earned over time. No. You have, you have to give someone trust if you want them to trust you as well. You know, it's like a hundred percent. Sometimes you can't a hundred percent. No, you just have to. You just have to be brave and trust that person. And until they do something to ruin your trust, and then obviously, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, not for sure. But yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. I'm thinking, I'm trying to think, this is crazy. I know, I know. Why, why, why is my mind blank? Like, I should have thought about this before we sat down to film. Because I didn't think about this at all. I just got these questions and then I was like, let's press play. Shit is just gonna come to me. It's not coming to me. <laughs> Probably if the partner is not giving you enough attention, the right attention that you want. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Your experiences do feel very personal. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like you are going very personal, which is which is fair. Yeah, like in in the past, obviously, that the one relationship really messed me up. <laughs> it didn't mess me up. I'm oh joking. my god, we're never gonna stop hearing about this one relationship. No, no, no. No, no, it's fair enough. That's where you, I, can go off I was gonna say that's where you have your inspiration from. I'm yeah. trying to be general as well. Like I'm not trying to just think about my past relationships. Yeah. I'm just trying to think about relationships in general. If you don't argue ever, okay. Or that if you sad. argue too much, I'm gonna throw that in as well. Okay. But in my personal experience, in the past, we were never arguing. Yeah. We never reached to a point we would argue. Yeah. Because she would stop it from getting there. And sometimes you're like, I need that argument. I will stop it. No, you are yes. Right. Like, I need that argument. I need to know that we can overcome, overcome the argument by having it first. Yeah. Not just by suppressing it and never talk about it and just move on and cry. Yeah. And, and that like builds up. Yes. It's frustrating. 100%. If someone's not letting you <laughs> argue with them yeah. and get your feelings out, yeah. it's just frustrating. I feel like a good amount of argument within a relationship is good, it's healthy. Uh, if it's too much, if it's too often, then no. That should be also the reason why you should break up, in my opinion. Agreed. There's no way that you can't have disagreements. And if you are keeping those things to yourself, it's gonna build up and one day you're gonna explode. 100%. Do you know what I mean? It's definitely how you argue as well, you know? How you argue, yes. Like, you gotta be always open to listen to your partner as much as you don't wanna even look at them in that moment, <laughs> perhaps. And just, you know, hear them out and have a proper conversation. Yeah, could be argumented, but it's still a conversation. 
you still understanding that you are loving that partner. Yes. You have love for that partner. Is if you are questioning it <laughs> in your head. <laughs> like I know that's really obvious, but I feel like that was a big one that people ignore. Really like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you are wondering, if you're on this video and this, and you're like really sat here wanting to listen intently to know what the signs are for if you should break up, that means you're probably maybe that maybe you're just interested, but. No, you have a good point there. I feel like if you're thinking in your head, should I break up, like, or, or those are even thoughts. Yeah. There's a reason you're having those thoughts. Yeah. Or those doubts. And maybe you should listen to it because sometimes your gut, most times your gut is actually right. Mm -hmm. And if you're thinking deep down, this relationship needs to end for whatever reason. Yeah, then it must be a reason why you're then, feeling so unease. If you're questioning that deep down, should I end this? Is this relationship right? I feel like if you're in the right relationship, you won't be so torn up inside. 100%. I don't think when I knew I actually wanted to be in a relationship with someone, I was ever questioning it. I was certain. Mm -hmm. You know, when I started questioning it, that was the slow decline until the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I understand that. So, yeah, we can go with that. You yeah. had some good points. No, oh, you too. Great. So, next question is, is it okay to stay friends with an ex? This is controversial, I think. And I feel like it's super controversial in the LGBT yeah. plus community because yeah. lesbians tend to stay friends very often with their exes. Yeah. You know, all the exes know each other. It's a whole intertwined circle of everyone just staying friends. <laughs> what? You're not friends with your ex? But I was. <laughs> yeah. But not. You didn't continue staying friends with your ex. I stayed friends with my ex for a little bit after we broke up. Yeah. But it was like a year after we broke up. Mm -hmm. So I had the space to move on and yeah. heal and all that. But I could tell that she perhaps, I might be wrong, not in the same space of mind as me. Yeah. So we stopped hanging out after that. In my opinion, Maybe because I'm thinking about me, you and I, like, I feel like because we have such a deep connection, if, if, wood, touch wood, don't break the wood, um, we would have to, we, we would have a break up, we should stay friends. <laughs> I feel like it would be great. <laughs> Stop talking about us breaking up. Yeah, I'm just saying. Last time for the comments. <laughs> I'm just saying, I feel like in this case, it would be okay for us to stay friends. Yes, I feel like because of how, no, like I feel like because of how, if we're gonna you draw off a person yeah. of you and I, I feel like if you and I were to break up, we definitely need a lot of time. To, apart. Apart, to get over it. I feel like uh, our relationship yeah. is so deep that would we be actual friends? No. Maybe not. Okay. It would hurt too much. Right. We would need a lot of space because of how deep our relationship is, but because of how much we care about each other and because I can't imagine ever not caring about you to some extent. Yeah. I would definitely be open if we healed and moved on completely yeah, yeah, to being yeah. your friend. Yeah. If my partner was okay with it. For me personally, I think it depends on what your partner, the person you're with, feels yes. about it. Yeah. Because I think it's fair if someone is not comfortable with you being friends with an ex. Especially if it's a relationship that just ended. Yeah. And you put up I completely agree with that. That works point. also with somebody maybe you slept with or things like that. Like maybe I know this is about being an ex, I'm just thinking about it in general. Oh my god, did you guys watch Love is Mine? This is reminding me of Love yes. is Mine. There was, was that one that. couple and the internet went crazy. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys watch Love is Mine, the girl that compared herself to Megan Fox. I feel bad even bringing it up because yeah. I've seen so many people talk about it on the internet and now I'm talking about it as well, yeah. adding more to it. But um, she was super insecure, so she had her issues. Yeah. But then the internet was literally divided between her and him. If he was wrong, if she made her insecure, if he made her insecurities worse. Yeah. Because he brought basically two girls to meet her. On the show Love Is Blind, you have to bring some of your friends to meet the person that you're marrying. He brought two girls, one of them that he slept with. They are no, not just random girls, they are best friends. They are, this. well, they're friends. Yeah. They're friends of his, yes. She was pissed off about that. Yeah. She wasn't okay with the relationship. Yeah. So everyone on the internet had their opinions about 
what they think about staying friends with an ex. And then his point was that she was still friends with um, her ex fiance. Oh or, wow. Or her ex husband, because I think she was married. Oh wow. But she was like, she doesn't even talk to him. She did, they just have calls once in a while, whereas he's, he was constantly texting that girl. They were meeting up. Yeah. That's why I feel like it's controversial, because I was reading people's opinions on it, mm -hmm. how you handled that with your partner, and I'm just. I, I really don't know 100% how I feel about that, so I do feel like it depends your the situation you're in, and I definitely feel like if you were if you if you want to be friends with someone that you slept with, or that you were in a relationship with, there needs to be some space in between that, yeah. out of respect for your partner. Yeah. Like at least a gap. At least a gap. Yeah. Because also you don't know how that person feels about your partner. Exactly, which is why you had to end your thing because you can tell that yeah, exactly. she still liked you. Yeah and, yeah, and I felt that was wrong, so I was like, okay, no, wait a minute, this is never gonna happen. I have stayed friends with exes as well, to be honest. I wouldn't say friends, but I have pretty much most of my exes I left on good terms with. And after the breakup, maybe a few months after with healing, We've always like texted back and forth after, like, how are you? Uh, happy birthday, or like, you know, there might just be a few exchanges of conversation every couple months or something like that. My first exes, I've seen several of them after and hung out with them. Like, this was like 10, 12 years ago, yeah, like, yeah. my first ever relationships. Yeah. Like, I literally consider those people li just as friends. Sometimes I even forget that I, I dated them. Yeah. That's why I feel like the distance in time is definitely a huge factor because this is a, if this is an ex from like 10 years ago you are a completely different person mm -hmm. there is such a long time in between that you've both moved on with your life yeah but if it's an ex from a year ago two years ago that's different i understand why your partner might feel more uncomfortable with the idea but yeah i was gonna say to answer the question for me it's really really about how the person you're with feels mm -hmm. not like the top one and how you two feel about each other. If there is any feelings that he just said, or it's one of you is still hooked up in what, it, what you used to be and things like that. Yeah, but 100%, I can, I can say this with complete certainty. If you break up with someone, you can't be friends right after. Right after, yeah. You cannot be friends right after. It's literally impossible. Don't do it. Don't think you can do it. It's not healthy. It's not gonna work. You're not gonna get over it. I strongly believe that yeah. if you break up with someone, you cannot be friends with them immediately after. Yeah. If you both heal and you move on, you come back and you meet up or you, you decide you want to be friends, sure. But it yeah. cannot be a, a transition from relationship over, let's be friends. It's never going to happen. It might feel comfortable to continue talking to that person. I understand why people might want to do it, just don't do it. I'm sure there are lots of people still gonna do it, even though I say this, because it's like one of the easiest things to do, yeah. and it's so hard not to do it because you want to continue talking to this person, but you can't. All communication needs to be cut. I feel like a lot of lesbians will disagree on what you're saying, because I feel like a lot of lesbians have done that, as you have said, in, yeah. our, in our community, it's very common to do this. Yeah. Uh, but I agree Directly with you. after? Yeah, I think, I think so. I don't know. I don't know. I can't, I've never been able to do that. You'd always keep coming back, it would bring fights, you're not even moving on. Next question. How do you know if that person is the one? Oh, that's a bit cuter. Oh, that's cute. I have one thing, because mm -hmm. I relate that with you. Okay. And I've experienced it with you, obviously. Yeah. I never get bored around you. Aww. Yeah. I literally never get bored around you. Because I'm so entertaining. <laughs> it's a... Uh, if we literally could be doing nothing, not talking, or talking, or going out, or staying home, anything and everything, mm -hmm. I'm never bored of you. Do you know like when you go out with friends at times, at some point you're like, okay, I'm going home now, you know, like, with you, I can stay all night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, that's your point? Yes, I have another if one. If you never get bored of that person. Yes. I mean, okay. Yes, but I also think it's totally normal and healthy if you do get bored with someone. Maybe maybe we aren't there yet. Maybe you might never be there. Like I said, because I'm so entertaining, but no, I'm joking. But um, 
I I also think it's totally okay if you do get bored with your partner. It's healthy. It's it's like the initial excitement dying down. I'm it's saying, not it's not not healthy if you don't get bored by the way. I'm not saying I am just saying for the people that might think, oh damn, I I'm bored in my relationship sometimes. I don't want them to worry that that means their relationship isn't right. 100%. Because I definitely get bored. But I'm not saying that I don't get bored in general. Yeah. Oh, I'm bored. I'm not. I'm, I'm not like with you. Yeah, I know, and I, that's what I'm talking about as well. Oh shit, okay. <laughs> she doesn't want me. <laughs> oh my god, baby. What I mean is you're not always going to be like having those same initial excitement, this is so fun feelings. And that's okay, Sorry. because life is... <laughs> I know that's what you meant. I'm okay. I have a whole different point. All right, cool, cool, cool. I'm not talking about what you meant. Okay. I agree with what you said. Yeah. It's really cute. That's a great point. Okay. I'm talking about something else. Okay, go ahead. The other side of that is if you do get bored, that's also okay. Because it's normal. And when you're with someone for a long time, you're just doing normal mundane tasks and you might just get bored. I am... You are very easily entertained, which is so great. But I am not. <laughs> I do get bored pretty easily. I don't get bored of you, necessarily. Yeah. Like, I'm not bored of you as a person, obviously. You're still interesting and entertaining to me. I still love being around you. But I'm just saying, in moments when we're doing stuff, yeah, I could feel bored. I, me too. A hundred percent. Okay. That's why I only meant, like, you as a person. Right. You know, like, the <laughs> things you said before that. Perfect. Like, I do get bored, obviously. How to know if that person is the one? Um, I think that is also a feeling. You can feel that deep down. As well as this person makes you a better person. They complement your life, they add to your life, they don't take away from it. Mm -hmm. If anything, they make everything better in your life. I mean, no relationship is easy, of course. No, of course. But I mean, outside of the hard things, them as a person, yeah, they lift you up. Yeah, they empower you. They make you feel like a better person. They make you want to be better. Yeah, uh, that to me is a really big thing because I know I definitely value that so much. Mm -hmm. uh, being with someone that adds to my life and adds to me in a good way, where I feel like I'm becoming a better person being with them. That's a good one. That's a really good yeah. one. You think about them. Before you think about yourself, yeah, you think about them as much as you think about yourself. Yeah, yeah, a huge priority in your life. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes you put them first. Yeah, because that's what love is. And but same again, if you're compromising yourself too much while doing that, that's wrong. I have one which I don't know if you'll agree on. Okay. Uh, but to know if that person is the one, I feel that there's something that you could do to decide, mm -hmm. both of you, moving together and try living together. If that goes well, if your living together situation mm -hmm. is good, is positive, is, is smooth, is equal, then that's one of the reasons I feel like you might be the right person as well. Yeah, I agree. I mean, yeah. that's, that's a good point. Yeah. I don't think it's necessary to know if, if, it's a, if, if that person is the one. I get what you're saying, but... I don't but think it's necessary. I don't think you have to move in to know if that person is the one. But I think if you are really struggling with that, then that could help. Yeah. Yeah. But again, if you're really struggling with if that person is the one, <laughs> maybe then <laughs> back to that point. How to know when to fight through hard times or when to give up? That, that's, a, <laughs> that's a hard that's one. That's a hard one. That's a really hard one. What were we thinking answering these questions? I don't know. We are opinion. not experts, but yeah. I just feel like I need to prepare for this a little bit more. But that's okay. We're winging it. We're... Um, I feel like you need to understand that, that both of you still want it. That's when you can keep fighting for it. Yeah, for sure. If one of you has completely given up and you can tell, it's, yeah. not, it's no longer worth it. That's a great... You know what? That is the best point. Yeah. I feel like if you are still fighting for that person, but you can feel like they are not fighting for you as much, yeah. then it's probably time to give up. Mm -hmm. If you are both fighting as much for each other still, yeah. that doesn't necessarily mean you should use it. It's right. No. But that's the thing. That is one step. One step. You're both still fighting as much for each other. Yeah. Which means there's something there that you're both still fighting for. Yeah. That neither of you have lost. Yeah. Um, Again, like I said, that doesn't mean it's still right. 
Um, I think another thing goes back to what I said before, which is uh, you just have that feeling. If it's like, if you're doubting so much, should I still be fighting for this person? Then maybe you shouldn't. I think relationships are hard, but I think knowing if you want to fight for someone, if you want to continue fighting for someone, mm -hmm. um, it shouldn't be hard. Being the one to give up, it doesn't make you a failure. No. If anything, you're just being the stronger person. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, because I feel like sometimes it's people, this question, because I got this question off the internet, I feel like it's so, uh, it's such a big question for people. It is. Because stopping fighting almost feels like um, quitting. Yeah. Failing. Yeah. And people hate that feeling of failing in yeah. something, you know? So you almost just don't want to give up until you literally can't. Until it's got as bad as it can possibly get. I and I've been that. there before. Same. Yeah. Maybe it was a relationship, but I had to find the reason that I've been looking for a long time. Yeah. Because otherwise I would have felt like it was not right, I would have felt guilty, uh, you know, all of that. So, her cheating on me. I was happy about it in some levels, obviously yeah. it hurt, but I was happy about it in some level yeah. because that gave me the right yeah. to to stop the relationship, to break up with her. But I wish I didn't have to do that. I could have done it months before and I would have I would have saved some time of my life. Yeah, so sometimes you have to it's good it's good to get, giving up is not failing and it's, it's not, not losing. Sometimes giving up is the best thing to do for yourself and for the other person as well. Yeah, they might so, not see it. Yeah, but they will. Yeah, I hope that helps because I feel like that's a very hard question for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I've been there as well. Like I needed to be pushed to the the end, the brink. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Before, even though I had thought about it many times, like this needs to be over. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be fighting for this anymore. Red flags early on in the relationship. So right off the bat, right off the gate. Yeah. First month, first weeks, first dates. Ooh. What are some red flags that you can get from people? Perhaps thinking about this little, like the worst thing ever. Like, uh, they don't want to have any. Because I've seen a video, that's why. They don't want to have any like picture taken together. They don't want to post you on their Instagram, things like that. That's a great one. Yeah. That's a great one. I that's saw a story one. of this girl that the boyfriend didn't want to be posted on her Instagram. Yeah. And then eventually she was like, I'll give you a year. If after a year you still don't want me to post you, I'm going to break up with you. She did that. She broke up with him and she posted the picture of him online. People found him. He had a girlfriend. And yeah. then a girlfriend. Yeah. You see? <laughs> it's messed up. It's messed up, yeah. No, that's a great one. If someone is like not wanting to share you on their social media, yeah. why? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I am like the opposite of that. Yeah. I'm like I'm posting you on my social media before we're even in a relationship. Yeah, yeah, same. <laughs> third, third date. If they're just weird about any of their yeah. social medias, they're probably hiding something. Mm -hmm. How they are with their friends. And I guess I'm thinking a lot about guys when I think about this. Me too. I don't know why? Like <laughs> girls don't have red flags. <laughs> You're but they do though. So if they go out with their friends, uh, they're messy about it. They don't tell you when they. Oh yeah. You know, coming yeah. home, or you just don't feel like, you know, the boys. Yeah. Those type of those type of guys. I'm like I'm all with the boys yeah. or whatever, and like they don't want they don't want you to come out ever with them or like I'm like mm. not good. That for me is a red flag. Their boys will probably always be their priority in the relationship. I have another one. What? It's literally kind of almost opposite to kind of that. Okay. Uh, when there you have a partner that is not respectful of your time with your friends. Like yeah. you can hang out with us even if you like. Yeah. But if they're like, no, I don't want you to go home with them. Oh my god. Oh yeah. For sure. Like controlling. Yeah. Controlling is That's definitely so one. Bad. And controlling can be shown in so many ways. Mm -hmm. In so many different ways. That one with friends is one. Yeah. Um, another one is like if they, you know, they want to know where you're at all the time. Yeah. Like to a point where it's like you feel uneasy about it. Yeah. yeah and I feel yeah. like you know when it when it's just someone's curious because they care. Yeah. Or when they want to know because they want to know what you're up to. Yeah. And or I, like. Sorry, they, they start an argument right before you're about to go out, for example? Yeah. They mention how you dress. Oh, they yeah. eventually want to control what type of 
what clothes you wear, like, what, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, whereas I'm like, where be girls? Just girls do that too. Want. Girls do that too. do that too to me. What, how you dress? Yeah. No, Vandal shit is a thing though. Yeah, she wanted me to look girlier. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's controlling. Yeah. That's controlling. No, that yeah, is controlling, yeah. 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 She was doing that not because she was jealous. She was doing no. that because she just liked you looking girly. Yeah. Yeah. She wasn't attracted to you tomboyish. That wasn't Probably. even a, a jealousy thing. That was like a she wanted to make you into someone you weren't. Yeah. Yeah. Which is also bad. Bad, bad. So I, I feel like anyone that right off the bat at any time actually, I don't think anyone should ever comment on your style, how you look. Yeah. If someone is trying to change anything about your physical Yourself, yeah. Unless they're just helping you pick out an outfit, like I just with friend. you, That's or you true. ask me advice. Yeah. You know, I might, you might ask me if like I like your outfit, and I'll be honest and I'll say no. <laughs> but you ask me, <laughs> so like you know, it's different. Obviously, it's yeah. the way it's done. Like everything I'm saying is the way it's done. I feel like boom, knocking boom. them off. How to know when you are ready for marriage with your partner? That's the last question. Let's wrap it up with that because it's a long video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one is. That one's another hard one. That is another one. It's the hardest question yeah, to you answer. Did it, I swear. I don't know why I did this. But I can just draw off my experience. Mm. For the reasons that I mentioned before as well, how comfortable I was with you, how in love I am with you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I I just like knew it, you know. And again, it was a feeling. Yeah. And uh, I wasn't scared. I mean, I was a little bit scared, but I knew it was gonna be okay because I had you by my side, you know? Yeah. I, I felt like uh, I was never gonna find somebody that could take care of me the way you do. Aww. And, and the little baby. Yeah. <laughs> Depends on what your partner's also ready for. If you're, mm -hmm. if you're wanting to get married at this stage yeah. in your life. If you want marriage at all, obviously you yeah, can, you, you, you can be you can be with the person that's the one, and you might never want marriage. Or mm -hmm. marriage could be important to you. You want to be married before you have kids. Yeah. I don't feel like marriage. It's just a it's a paper. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't change the fact that you only want to someone or not, or your soulmates or whatever. Maybe we can talk more like logically. Are you financially <coughs> stable? Are you financially stable or you're working on being financially stable together? Mm -hmm. If you have opened up enough with those money conversations together mm -hmm. to know because obviously when you get married yeah. you are sort of combining in a way or you want to build something with your partner, yeah. right? That's the purpose of marriage as well. If you have the same life dreams yeah, of wanting to buy a house or having kids or you know, you can have different opinions of that. Oh, I have a good one. Okay. You both spoke about it. And you both agree you're both ready. I think that's a good That one. is it. That's all you need to know. You just gotta yeah. talk about it with your partner. I feel like it's a conversation you need to have. You don't wanna propose to someone if you aren't fully sure that they're ready for that. Yeah. Or that they're gonna say yes. Because it's not nice for anybody to have to turn you down. Mm -hmm. So make sure you have those important conversations before you decide to get down on one knee. I definitely knew you were gonna say yes, vice versa. But yeah, hope you learned or took something from this video and if you have any tips below or you have any opinions of your own, write them down. Let's learn from each other. Absolutely, as always guys, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. Peace.